Hi there. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how we could do this question by considering the modulus of z equaling 3. I want to do this question again and show you an alternative method, which is often used, and that is by comparing real and imaginary parts. So just as a reminder, we'll read through the question first of all. For the transformation w equaling 1 divided by 3 minus z, z not equaling 3, show that the image under the transformation t of the modulus of z equaling 3 in the z-plane is a line l in the w-plane. And we've got a sketch l on an argon diagram. So first of all, what we do is we just put down our transformation, which is that w equals 1 divided by 3 minus z. And from this, OK, it follows that if we were to multiply both sides by 3 minus z, we would get w multiplied by 3 minus z equals 1. And if we expand the bracket out, we would therefore have 3w minus wz equals 1. And if we make z the subject from here by adding wz to both sides, subtracting 1 from both sides, and then finally dividing by w, you're going to get that z equals 3w minus 1, and then all of that is divided by w. Now, what I'm going to do is let w equal u plus iv. And so therefore, what we've got is z equals 3 times w. That would be 3 times u plus iv. And then we've got minus 1. And this is all divided by w, which is now u plus iv. And if I expand the bracket and group up the real parts and imaginary parts, I've got 3u minus 1, that's the real part, OK, 3u minus 1, put that in brackets there. And then we've got plus 3iv, or we'll just call that 3v and then i. And this is then divided all by u plus iv. Now to simplify this, I need to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of u plus iv. So that's going to be u minus iv over u minus iv. Now if we expand this then, collecting up, say, the real parts first, we're going to have u multiplied by all of 3u minus 1. So that's going to be a real part. So we'll have u multiplied by 3u minus 1. We're also going to get a real part when we multiply 3vi with minus iv. That's going to give us a positive 3v squared. Okay, And that's going to be all divided by u plus iv multiplied by u minus iv, which is going to come to u squared plus v squared. And then for the imaginary part, we're going to have plus, and if I put i outside a square bracket, what are the imaginary parts going to be? Well, you're going to have u times the 3v, so you're going to have 3uv. And you're also going to have minus iv times all of 3u minus 1. We've already got the plus i out the front, so it's just going to be minus v times 3u minus 1. And again, that's all going to be over the denominator here, that when you multiply that out, you get u squared plus v squared. And let's just section this off, OK? We'll just come down to here first of all. Now if I let z equal x plus iy, OK, I'll just mark that in there, then we've got that x plus iy 
equals this complex number here. And this is where we compare the real and imaginary parts. So it follows that x, the real part of z, must be equal to the real part here. So we've got u multiplied by 3u minus 1 plus 3v squared all divided by u squared plus v squared. And also if we compare the imaginary part of z, which is y, with this imaginary part here, we've got y equals 3uv minus v times 3u minus 1 and that is all divided by u squared plus v squared. Now we know that the modulus of z equals 3 so let's just put here since that modulus of z that be the modulus of x plus iy okay must equal 3. But if I square both sides then we've got the modulus of x plus i y all squared equals 3 squared. So therefore what we've got is x squared plus y squared must equal 3 squared which is 9. So if I square x first of all what we're going to get, just taking the top here, is going to be u squared times 3u minus 1 all squared. So u squared times 3u minus 1 all squared. Then we're going to get twice the product here. So that's going to be 6uv squared times all of 3u minus 1. So 6uv squared multiplied by all of 3u minus 1. And then squaring this last term is going to give me plus 9v to the power 4. Now I'm going to leave the denominator all squared at the moment. We'll just take the top part for y squared. I can see that we've got 3uv minus 3uv at the moment so that's just going to cancel out and then we'll have minus v times minus 1 which is going to be plus v. So if I square that that's just going to be plus v squared. And all of this will now be over the denominator all squared. So we've got u squared plus v squared all squared. So that's x squared plus y squared and we see that this equals 9. Next I'm going to multiply both sides by u squared plus v squared all squared. And that's just going to give me the top here equaling 9 times u squared plus v squared all squared. And to save time what I've done is I've expanded this. And this is what we get. On the left hand side we get this full expansion here and then we've got 9 times the result of this bracket all squared out. Remember if you square the bracket you're going to get u to the power 4 plus 2u squared v squared plus v to the power 4 and if you multiply that by 9 that's what you're going to get. Now if we tidy this up we can see that quite a bit cancels out. 9u to the 4 cancels with this 9u to the 4. We've also got 18u squared v squared on both sides so they're going to get cancelled out. And the same is true with 9v to the power 4 and 9v to the power 4 there. Now simplifying this therefore gives us v squared here okay and then we've got minus 6uv squared minus 6uv squared and then plus u squared and then minus 6u cubed and this equals 0. Let's just carry on bordering this off. Let's extend this down here a little okay and then through here down there and across like so okay. So 
carrying on, what we can do now is we can factorise this expression by grouping. If I take the first two terms here, I can see that v squared is a common factor. So we've got v squared multiplied by 1 minus 6u. And then for these two terms, if I pull out plus u squared, I get 1 minus 6u again there. And that equals 0. Now, 1 minus 6u is a common factor between these two terms. So therefore, we've got 1 minus 6u multiplied by all of v squared plus the u squared here. Factorising them by grouping, and that equals 0. Now we know that w equals u plus iv, and both u and v can't be 0. So what we've got here is that this term can't be 0. So that must mean that 1 minus 6u must be equal to 0. So therefore 1 minus 6u is equal to 0. And rearranging this for u gives us u equals 1 sixth. So when it comes to sketching this on the w plane, what we've got is a straight line where u equals 1 sixth. And this line then is called L and it passes the axis here, cuts the axis here at 1 sixth. OK, well, I hope this has given you another way of approaching this problem, that you've been able to see how we can compare real and imaginary parts. And this is a process that you'll find that you can do generally in most questions. But uh, it's not necessarily the only way of doing it, as I showed you in the previous video, where we looked at the modulus of z and built up an equation out the modulus idea. But as I say, it's another method and you might need to employ this in some examples that you do.